Hello. Hello, good morning. Is that Robert? Yes, speaking. Hello. Hello, hi. hi. My name is Philip. How are you? Yeah, not too, not too bad, thank you. Thank you for getting back to me. Oh, well, that's a pleasure. I, I hope I didn't keep you waiting too long. <laughs> no, that's OK. Just, <laughs> just was caught up doing something else. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, OK. So, um, so you managed to get uh, uh, um, details on the website, my wife was saying. Um, I've been on the website during the lockdown, jw.org, and I've downloaded Enjoy Life Forever. I've been looking at okay. a couple of chapters of the book. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, yeah, go ahead, sorry, I don't want to interrupt you. <laughs> no, no, sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you either. Yes, so, um, so have you, is it, is it your first time you've, you've looked at uh, Jehovah's Witnesses and, you know, the information they they provide. Through oh Bible. no, no, no! I I I did look at one of your yellow books, um, the small yellow book, about ten fifteen years ago. I went through that oh, right. with somebody. Okay, so you so you so did you uh, have a study before? Yes, with the small yellow book. Enjoy uh-huh. life. Um, what was it called? Teach. That's it. Or yes. It, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, how, how did you get on with that? Uh, well, we stopped at lesson four because I believed mm-hmm. in the Trinity, so they said it wasn't for me. Right. There was two of them okay. to start, but I think by lesson four, I think there was four of them. It, it, I was ganged up a little bit. <laughs> 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 seem to be an extra person each week mm-hmm. I think it right. did start off with two people though um, mm-hmm. yeah um, I'm looking at uh, enjoy life forever page 165 it's lesson 39 right. God's view of blood On page 165, it shows blood that's been separated into its constituent parts. Um, They Uh do that in hospitals by spinning the blood at high speed in a centrifuge. So the heavier part of blood, the red blood cells are at the bottom of the test tube. The lighter stuff, the plasma is at the top. And then you have white blood cells and platelets in the middle. Um, Uh My question is, I found out that since the 1980s, Jehovah's Witnesses are allowed since the 1980s, there was a relaxation on the blood policy, to have blood fractions, which are basically part of part of blood that's been modified in some way. I mean, red blood cells are basically, a fraction of red blood cells is basically red blood cells because it carries oxygen in the blood. And if you alter it too much, if you were to take all the water out, it would turn into a powder and it would be ineffective. It wouldn't be able to carry red blood cells. So... Uh, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a doctor, but the fractions are basically um, those four parts of blood uh, and some of it is mod- modified in some some way. I mean, but the, the red blood cells and the plasma are more or less the same as far as I, I know. Um, why are Jehovah's Witnesses not allowed to have whole blood transfusions? But if you split blood into its four constituent parts, you can have that. You can have a fraction from red blood cells, fractions from platelets, fractions from white blood cells, and fractions from plasma. It's kind of like saying Christians are not allowed to eat cake. It's a sin to eat a cake. Cake is made up of water, yeast, flour, um, sugar. Uh, I think there's something else as well. (laughs) Right? Um... And you can't eat cake, but you can eat the constituent parts of cake. Christians can drink water, they can eat yeast, sugar, flour, and these constituent parts of cake, if you have them separately, you're allowed to eat them. But if you mix them together in a bowl and turn it into a cake, you can't have that. It just seems inconsistent to me. for Jehovah's 
COVID witnesses, the whole whole blood um, is is obviously something that we don't have. Um, blood is made up of its four uh, major components, which you, you've uh, correctly uh, highlighted, and within each of those um, components, red cells, white cells, platelets, plasma, um, there are uh, fractions, derivatives from each of those components that are used in medicine. So um, now when, when, it, when it comes to those fractions for Jehovah's Witnesses, this is where it, it is a matter of personal choice and conscience. Yes, yes, but my point is yeah. that before the 1980s, Jehovah's Witnesses were not permitted to take fractions. If you took a fraction, you would be kicked out, called disfellowshipping. If you took a fraction, oh. there's been some relaxation from various times in the 1980s. And at various times in the 1980s, uh, at different times, all of the four fractions are now permitted. Now, you say it's a conscience matter. In other words, they are permitted. So, so why, 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 yeah, why, why can't a Christian have a whole blood transfusion when a whole blood transfusion is exactly the same? as having the four fractions, fractions of red and white blood cells, fractions from platelets and fractions from plasma. Those four fractions are the same as whole blood. Was it, was it, uh, was it, um, I, know, I know from what you've mentioned from the 80s and so forth, I'm pretty certain that what was discussed was in, in respect to the components I've just, I've just, I've said that twice. The major, major component. I've said of, that. Of blood. I've said that in the 1980s, various uh -huh. fractions of blood, not whole blood, but fractions from blood. And so at one time, I'm, I'm, I've got my notes somewhere else. It would take me a while to look it up. But at various times in the 1980s, at one time they said no, fractions from red blood cells are now a conscience matter, meaning you can have them. At a different time, fractions from platelets were allowed in the 1980s. At a different time in the 1980s, they said fractions from white blood cells are now a conscience matter, meaning you can have them. And at different times in the 1980s, they said fractions from plasma are allowed. So uh -huh. what's the difference between a Christian who decides to have those four fractions and somebody who has a whole blood transfusion. There isn't any real significant difference. Because... Well, well, I think you, you uh, gave a, a, an apt um, uh, illustration of what a fraction is um, in respect to the cake. Um, you have uh, various um, ingredients to or to, to a cake, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you, certainly, you, you're not gulping down the whole cake, but there are there are fractions of it. You might have water or, or uh, margarine. You might have sugar. You might have flavouring uh, to to it. Now, certainly, if if um, if if the scripture says uh, that we should abstain from blood. We think of the major components of blood, red cells, white cells, platelets and plasma. Those are the major components of blood. And it Jehovah's Witnesses... Whole, it constitutes whole blood. Yes, but since the 1980s, Jehovah's Witnesses are, are permitted to have those four fractions, which are the they those are four fractions yeah. together are the same as whole blood. They are no. They they're not permitted to have those components. Yes, they're they are. Permitted to have. Yes, they are. It's a conscience. Know? It's called a conscience matter, which means it's uh, now permitted. No, no. Correctly, com correctly. Jehovah's Witnesses recognise that blood is made up of its four major components. Its components. Now, those components individually 
um, the medical world has uh, separated its a fraction, a derivative from either one of those components. And they use it within various aspects of medicine. Now, when it comes to the fraction of one of those components, Jehovah's Witnesses leave that to a matter of personal decision and conscience to accept a fraction from one of those components. But the component on its own, the whole component, white, um, plasma, platelet, red cell, we refuse to take that whole component. But we do not necessarily refuse a fraction from either one of those components. We leave that to an individual to make up his own decision in respect to whether or not they view it, personally view it, as a con um, a con um, uh, going against God's law on blood. Because we, we're bringing things down to its finite yeah, so that's where Jehovah's Witnesses stand on the issue of blood. We will not accept whole blood. We will not accept uh, those four, either one of those four major components. But you but do. When it comes to... Y you do, since the 1980s, it's, it's a conscience matter, which is double talk or double speak for saying, yeah, it's now permitted. We don't... <laughs> Um, I, I, okay, could I ask a different question about blood, if that's possible? Uh -huh. yeah. um, on the internet, you can download your book, Shepherd the Flock of God. It's, it's all over the internet, and I downloaded a 2019 edition. And on page 152, talking about people who have accepted blood transfusions, that's section 18.3, subsection 3, on page 152. It says that if someone accepts a blood transfusion and they're not re re repentant, they're to be disfellowshipped. If they are repentant, they are to have certain privileges removed. And obviously it doesn't mean these privileges are removed for a few hours or a few days. It's talking about removing privileges for a few months, maybe even years. Yes? Uh -huh. When I go to the Bible... In Leviticus 17 and I see people who have broken God's law on blood on blood by eating blood um, or offering the wrong burnt offering or sacrifice it says they're to be cut off so a person offers the wrong sacrifice in Leviticus 17 8 I'll just read it and you shall say to them whatever man of the house of Israel or of the strangers who sojourned among you who offers a burnt offering or sacrifice and does not bring it to the door of the tabernacle of meeting to offer it to the Lord. So he offers it in the wrong place or the wrong sacrifice. That man shall be cut off from among his people. Now, verse uh -huh. 10 talks about blood. And whatever man of the house of Israel or of the stranger who sojourns among you, who eats any blood, I will set my face against that person who eats blood and will cut him off from amongst his people. So again, the person is cut off. Now, in different contexts of the Bible, cut off has a different meaning. It can mean executed in the case of blasphemy. The context for cut off, which is repeated in verse 14, is not execution and not permanent exclusion from Israel. Because if you go, it mentions blood again in verse 14, and in verse 15, the person who breaks the commandment of blood, who has been cut off, is to go outside the camp, have a ritual cleansing bath, cleanse their clothes. They are then to be pronounced clean and they're to come back into the camp that evening. So the person who was cut off for breaking God's commandment on law, on, on God's commandment on blood, was only to be cut off for evening. 
I'll read Leviticus 17 verses 13 to 15. And whatever man of the children of Israel or of the strangers who sojourn among you, who hunts any animal or bird that may be eaten, he shall pour out its blood and cover it with dust. I'd like to point out that Jehovah's Witnesses don't do that. You're not kosher. Jews, Orthodox Jews are kosher. Muslims are halal. They drain the blood from the body. But as far as I know, Jehovah's Witnesses buy the same meat um, that everyone buys from Tesco's or Sainsbury's or the co-op. You don't buy halal or kosher meat. You buy meat that's got more blood in it because it hasn't been drained the kosher way. Verse 14, Leviticus chapter 17, verse 14. So the context is blood. For it is the life of all flesh, its blood sustains life. Therefore I said to the children of Israel, you shall not eat the blood of any flesh, for the life of all flesh is in its blood. Whoever eats it shall be cut off. So cut off. Okay. What is the meaning of the word cut off in this context? Verse 15, and every person who eats what died naturally, we'd call that roadkill, okay? Or that's what we'd call it today, not, not in biblical times, but they're talking about the same thing. Or what was torn by beasts, whether he is a native of your own country or a stranger, he shall both wash his clothes and bathe in water and shall be unclean until evening. Then he shall be clean. So somebody who broke God's law is to be cut off until evening just a few hours they wash their clothes have a ceremonial bath they come back into the camp the same day that very evening but in shepherd the flock of god page 152 the jehovah's witness rules on blood are totally different if you break if you break the jehovah's witness rules on blood even if you're repentant you ought to have several privileges removed for a, at least a few months. So there's your shepherd, the flock of God, is at variance with the Bible. You break God's commandment on by on on blood. You're to be cut off from Israel for a few hours. You break Jehovah's Witnesses' commandments on blood. If you're not repentant, you're disfellowshipped. But even if you are repentant, you're to be cut off. You, 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 you're to lose your privileges for a few months. And I would point out that every Jehovah's Witness breaks God's law on blood because you're not kosher, you're not halal. You buy the same meat from Tesco's or Sainsbury's or the co-op that everybody else eats. If you buy a steak, it's going to be red in the middle because it's got blood in it. It hasn't been drained the kosher way. Jehovah's Witnesses are not kosher. So I think this whole policy on blood is just an invention. I think it's done for the reason just to make your group distinct, make your group different to, to other groups so that you can have a sort of group loyalty and a group identity with the ones who don't take blood transfusions. Um, anyway, thank you. Thank you for listening okay. to me. No, no, I, I'm, I'm listening and I want you to know exactly why um, this was of interest to you. Um, obviously, yes, you've done some research. Um, have you? I mean, were you, were you one of Jehovah's Witnesses before? No, of course not. I've never been a Jehovah's right. Witness, but I was an okay. evangelical Christian. I uh -huh. used to be an evangelical Christian. Mm -hmm. Right. And and do you yourself keep? to what you've just read there in respect to God's law and blood? I don't go to any church, mate. I gave it up in 2010. I couldn't stand the utter hypocrisy and the absolute, absolute, total incapacity to discuss the Bible, to sit down and talk about the Bible. This is just a brief message from me, Robert Skinner, at the end. I was wondering if there's somebody out there who could help me. I am finding this work uh, of, of making these videos all on my own really too, too difficult for me and too stressful. And I do need to stop. Besides which, at, at over 1,300 videos, I reckon I probably covered about between two thirds and three quarters, at least two thirds to three quarters of all of the Kingdom Halls here in the UK. 
So there isn't really much need for me to do more videos here in the UK. Besides which, you don't get to um, see the work I do before I speak to these Jehovah's Witnesses, and that is that I phone up endless kingdom halls and I'm told over and over again, oh yes, we know you, you're Robert Skinner, not speaking to you, goodbye, phone goes down. So really what I'm saying is my work here in the UK is, is coming to an end. I don't wish to stop this work of evangelizing Jehovah's Witnesses, but it's, it's too stressful here on my own in the UK, where almost every congregation now seems to be warned against me. What I would love to do, if somebody could help, is to assist somebody outside of the UK who evangelizes Jehovah's Witnesses on Zoom or WebEx. Um, all you have to do is go to jw.org, go to find a meeting, and then you will find congregations of Jehovah's Witnesses with the telephone numbers in your country, which I hope will be either New Zealand, Australia, Canada, or the USA. Phone up that number, arrange a meeting. Remember, I'm on British time, so please don't arrange a meeting at sort of three o'clock in the morning, my time, or four o'clock in the morning, my time. I don't mind staying up late, but four o'clock in the morning is too difficult. So arrange a meeting with a Jehovah's Witness, say we'll, we'll meet on Zoom, and can I invite a friend to come along? And I'd love to take part, but assisting somebody else. Um, I think that's what I can offer from now on. I, I'd like to be there as somebody who just helps other people to evangelize. And I'm the number two person. Um, I, I'm there more in the background and let somebody else go into the foreground. So if anyone's interested, um, get back to me. Um, you can find my email address uh, in the about section of Christian Comedy Channel 2. But it's the badge at... Um, yahoo badge two at yahoo.co.uk. Couldn't even say it properly. I'll put it at the bottom of the screen. Thank you very much.